Sunday night. Hey, 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 Sunday night. Time to focus our energy for the week. Come on in and join me. Terry Ann Hyman here, Natural Forces Studio in the Empowered Spirit Circle on Facebook. I'm also streaming on Instagram, Terry Ann Hyman here. Come on in and join me. It's time to focus our energy for the week. Look and see what's going on. Talk about how we can align our energy with the cosmos and just check in. Got some great cards to talk about as well. So come on in and join me. It's time to really kind of focus in. We've got a moon in Pisces this weekend. Kind of the theme I've been talking about is sensitivity. Are you noticing all those sensitive issues around you? How are you feeling with that? Are you taking them in too much? Are you throwing them out on others too much? Where are you noticing the sensitive energy in your own life? That's kind of what I've been asking. So check it out for yourself. Take a moment and post below. What are you feeling? So I go to find this on Facebook and share it out. If you'll do me a favor and share it as well, that would be really great. As we go to focus our energy, talk about what's going on, and align with the cosmos. All right, here it is. If you're on Instagram, I don't know if you can share it on Instagram or not, but if you can, that would be super great. All right, here we go. All right, share one more time. So we're going to talk about it. Let me know below. Are you feeling really sensitive? Are you taking in way too much energy that's not even yours? Post below. Are you super sensitive? Would you like to learn more about how you can use this sensitive energy to your better good? Post that below too. I'd love to hear how you're using the energies right now. What are you noticing for you? All right. I think I've got it shared. Here we go. Okay. Yay. So thanks for joining me. Come on in tonight. Let me know how you're feeling. We're going to pick some cards. We're going to talk about the energy of what's brewing right now in the cosmos. Very interesting aspects. We're moving towards a full moon on Wednesday. So as you go to start your week, you're going to feel a little bit of this sensitive energy. We're in Pisces and we have a little void, of course, tomorrow, which kind of means like notice your energy body. Notice those feelings around you. Be sure not to hold on to them. Be sure to know your Versus everybody else's, if you tend to take in more energy than yours, you're not going to know what to do about it, all right? So very important that you begin to notice that energy for yourself, all right? Then as we move into Wednesday, you're going to be able to really kind of feel that illumination. We're going to move into more earth signs, so it's an opportunity for you to then start grounding your energy a little bit, all right? So we're in the sun sign of Scorpio. All right, Scorpio is in opposition to where we are with Taurus. That's the moon sign. So having a moon in Taurus, I can relate. I can let you know that Taurus is about really connecting with Mother Earth. It's really about the essence of that beauty and the grounding and the arts and loving in and grounding down. That's what really kind of the the um, Taurus energy is going to help you with. And then we're in opposition to Scorpio, which also brings us deeper. Scorpio kind of rules that eighth house of our deeper work and our deeper things that we're looking at and we're opening up to. So that's what we're going to be feeling, a little bit of that opposition that is going on, all right? Full moons are really great times as the energy builds. It really helps illuminate. It helps us to see all of us, all those many different layers, right? The light's out there. It's opening up. So we really can be seen by ourselves and also by others too. So that's why many times we feel very emotional. We feel very big in our energy because we're taking in so much of that energy. But the beautiful thing is, is as that energy builds, as it opens up and shines the light, then by Thursday, after the moon becomes full, Thursday night, Friday, then we start the release. And the opportunity during full moons is to release that less than vibration, that lower vibration, so you can attract the higher vibrations that can magnify the energy for the intentions you've set all during this beginning of the cycle, right? You can attract the magic. You can attract the synchronicities in your life. All right, so that's how we're going to be building the energy for the week. So careful about your emotions. Careful not to sling too much out there, all right? And just keep... Really working with the purpose, the intentions of the month, the harvesting of your work. That's what we're working with. And then as the moon is full, that's when you really just open up. Put it out there. Allow yourself. It's a great time to be in community. It's a great time to connect with others. We see the moon, right? It's like, wow, look how beautiful. Feel that energy all around for you and all of those around you as well. All right, now we've been working with a lot of Scorpio energy all year, right? I mean, look at the energy out there, all of the stuff that's come up lately, all of that Scorpio energy 
really reminding us to do our work, really reminding us to open up to that deeper part of who we are, opening up to our intuitive abilities. That's exactly what this is about. I feel it. I know it. My mission, my passion lately has been on to help get intuition out there, teach people about the gut feeling, teach people. That's really what I'm big on. In fact, I'm having an event November 3rd, Saturday downtown at Forma. Come join us. We're going to be going through some of these intuitive school skills. Really big, really passionate. We need to know this. We need to be able to protect ourselves, protect our energy in the best way is knowing how we feel inside, knowing when we can trust those feelings, knowing when we have that gut feeling that something's not right. Get ourselves up and out of there. So definitely, I'm super passionate about it. The energy is definitely matching that for me right now. Perhaps that's why I'm so passionate about it. I feel like, gosh, I just have to get this out there. It really does. And we feel that energy moving. We also have some of that Venus retrograde energy coming in. All right, it's also in Scorpio, which is pulling us in to really look at that feminine part of us. Intuition again, the love and the beauty and trusting. So you're going to feel it. You're also going to feel some of that second chakra energy, relationships or money, however you're working with, maybe both. So maybe if your relationships aren't exactly where you want to be, you may feel challenged. All right, you may feel like, oh man, cut. Cut it loose or work it through one or the other. So you may feel that. Same with finances too. You may feel a little challenge. You may need to relook at what's going on for you, which is actually where we are in this year as well, harvesting all of that money too. All right. So looking and seeing where that is. Definitely like, you know, create a plan for yourself to figure that out. Break through this energy. It's an awesome time to move through the transformations that we're going through, all right? I was out today. It was crisp. It was cool this morning. I was in Atlanta, actually. Shout out to Laura Day. What a great workshop we had. One of my very first, my very first, not one of them. Well, Catherine was my spiritual teacher. But Laura Day was the first woman that was teaching me about my own intuition. So it was really fun to reflect over the last 20 years that I've been working in intuition. Great workshop in Atlanta. The colors are changing. We see that energy shifting. So it lets us reflect into where we are as well. All right, where are you changing? Where is that transformation coming forward for you? All right, very important that we ask ourselves these questions. Really, really important that we can understand and ask what is going on for ourselves. So that's really what we're building. The energy is a really great time, really, to open up to that transformative energy. Tar, sometimes we can hold on too tight. I know that. I admit that myself. So find the ability to let go of some of the attachments where you hold on too tight and don't want to change or don't want to move through, or maybe it's the relationship energy. Release some of that energy as well. Scorpio is going to pull us in. We're going to feel that really intensely as we move into the middle part of the week and then out into the weekend. It's a great time to get out, get together, really join in. We're going to see this. Lots of celebrations for Halloween, right? Lots of times to have fun with that kind of energy as well. Perfectly matching where we are right now. But we do have some of that op opposition. We also have some Uranus energy coming in. That's that expansive energy. That's a good time. Get in there and expand your work. Maybe you're working on some new things. Expand that energy. And we have a little bit of that conjunction with Saturn too. Uranus and Saturn, that kind of mix is going to kind of temper it a little bit in a good way though, in a really good way that you can be able to Feel the energy of where it is, it's not just way out there, but you have a little bit more of the grounding energy that comes in to help you understand that energy for yourself. All right, so that's what we have as we move forward. All right, so take a deep inhale. What I'd like to do is anchor in the directions, anchor in this energy for you and give you an opportunity to really kind of notice where that sensitive area is for you as well. Let me check in and see who's here. Hello, everybody. I see you coming in. Feeling defensive, having a hard time sleeping. Yep, sometimes we get to that full moon. I've been dreaming like crazy, Thelma. Crazy dreams. I love it. Animals and change and all of that. Really love it. Hey, Patrick, greetings. Hey, Alexandra. Yes, lots of heavy emotions. Having coming up for you to observe. Good. I'm making a middle note and bringing it to the full moon. Purging it on the full moon. Absolutely. And it's really important that we do that. Do a ritual. Like actually burn stuff. That's going to really help you shift energy. Rituals will help you to shift the energy. Really important that we do that as well. All right. All of this really can help you to make those changes. I mean, I know for myself, this has been an intense year. The Scorpio energy has gotten to me many times over. Keep going deeper. 
keep anchoring the energy for me, doing my cleansing, doing my clearing, so that I can make the shifts that I need, right? Life is always changing. We're always growing. We're always moving. And that's really important to understand and see. Hey, Brooke, how are you? All right. So let's just take a moment and ground our energies before we move to the cards. Bringing it in. Taking a nice deep inhale. Lighting some sage. Clearing out for all of us. Taking a nice deep inhale. Ha! Ah, and just exhale away. Calling in your energy from the weekend, from the week behind. Pulling it all. Exhaling down. Go deep into the earth. And inhale. Bring that energy back up for you. And exhale. Send it all the way down, deep into the earth, calling in, aligning the physical body with the spiritual body, bringing that spiritual body right on top, calling in your guides and your teachers. As we open up to honor this moment, let us anchor in all the directions. We start with the west, right? The season of fall, where the sun sets, where the light comes into darkness. We honor the harvest of our life. And we open up to the struggles as well. This is how we learn. And so we honor the West. We honor the North, the East, and the South. Above us, below us, right into the very center, right into our hearts, calling back that energy. As we open up to the cosmos, align to those vibrations, allow our intentions to build. So just for a moment, as you continue the breath, notice where you are. Notice right now what you hear. Notice what you see. Notice what you're feeling. Know those feelings. What is the knowing? Where's the sensitivity inside you? And what does that relate to? Take a moment. Bring it in. See if you can feel the edges of your aura. See if you can feel the edges of that emotional body. And then exhale down. Bring that awareness to you. Notice where it hits in the body. Notice the thoughts that it brings up for you. What is the clearing you can do for yourself? How do you see yourself right now? Take a deep inhale. And exhale. Grounding the energy. Pulling it all the way down deep into the earth. Checking in with that gut feeling. That's where we start learning about our intuitive abilities, right in the gut. Inhaling. And exhaling. Feeling yourself quieting a little bit, centering your energy. Knowing the light's going to build. Knowing the intensity may build behind it. See if you can calm and ground to start your week out. Inhaling. And exhaling, feeling that energy coming in, quieting the chatter if you can. Good. Taking a moment, setting your intention for this week. See how it aligns with the cards. You can always shift it if you need it. Inhaling and exhaling. Bringing the awareness back as we open up to the energy of the wild unknown. I was drawn to the wild unknown for the reading tonight. So, our anchor card for all of us. Now, this card can be a little intense, so let's look at it in the best light that we can. But it's perfect alignment. It is the death card. All right? It's never generally the physical death, though. It's always that more of that spiritual. And that's perfect timing right now. Because look at it. Look at the leaves falling. Look how the skeleton comes off those leaves. The colors come in. They dry up. They change. They shift. That's exactly what we are. I collected these acorns a few weeks ago. They were all green. Now they're brown. This is what we're going through right now. So this card is asking all of us to anchor this energy in to do the transformation that we need. Continue to shed those outer layers. We don't need them. All right. It's a really perfect card, perfect card for right now. Don't be afraid of it. Let those layers go, because when we do, we open up to that newness. 
taking us into new experiences and new life. Perfect time for right now, all right? So that's the anchor card. Now, how do we go about doing that? How can we use some of the help of the guidance of the cards to help us? All right, so if you didn't choose a card, choose one now, one, two, or three. All right, so the first card, if you chose number one, is the three of swords. All right, this isn't one of our favorite cards either. All right, this is always about there is some struggle. There is some conflict going on. Look, it looks like it's dripping here. But when we awaken to it, and remember, swords is of the mind, how much of it do we impose? How much of it is is just the churning and the churning and the churning of the same thing over and over and over? So this will help you by understanding where can I heal some more? Where can I let go of the chatter so that I can shed that layer? Otherwise, you're just going to keep winding yourself up if you hold on. Remember the attachments? Taurus, release those attachments. Let some of that healing come through, right? When we shed a tear, right? That's a healing. So where can you do that as you move through this week? Where can you really let go so that you can make that transformation? Especially in the mind, all right? Especially in the mind. Now, if you chose card number two, this is always an interesting card too. All right, the Hierophant. This card always makes me think. It really does. It's never been my favorite, but it actually in the Wild Unknown deck, I've actually grown to like it, grown to like it even more. So if you chose card number two, this is really about looking at Looking at the control, looking at your structures and your systems, are you giving your power away? All right, look at like the crow has a lot to say. His mouth is open. He's sitting on the key. And we've got this like lightning bolt coming in. All right, so in traditionally when you see this card, sometimes it's around structures, religious institutions. Maybe you're giving your power over to somebody and not really looking at what your own self is about. All right, but in the in this particular deck, it reminds us to look at our structures, to look at how we're li living our lives. There's more than one way to look at it. All right, maybe you do need some guidance and some help. It also many times does represent the mystery schools. All right, so looking at where you can find the ability to go deeper and maybe you do need to shift your structure. Today in my class today I took with Laura Day, as I mentioned, we were doing healings and I was like in a room full of people and it was just relying on intuition for healings and I didn't have my normal table and all of that. And it really did challenge me to look at what is my structure for healings. So it reminded me like, wow, this is exactly what this card is about. All right, sometimes we hold in too tight. We've got the key. We've got the structure. We know what it is. This card is challenging you to open that energy up, to look at what the structures are in your life. Are you listening to others? Are you listening to yourself? Where can you go deeper? That's some of that Scorpio energy coming forward. Where can you go deeper into trusting and working with that kind of energy for yourself? All right. And the more that you can maybe shift some of those structures, again, shedding that layer that you're holding on to. All right. And then the third card, which I love because it's like a new beginning, is the Fool. All right. And it's this card reminds us to have some of the innocence in life. But I love this card because it also reminds us of our intuition. We want to take that leap. All right. But when we work with our intuition, we can't just say, oh, spirit told me. We really have to know if we can trust the inspiration that comes in. So this is exactly what this card is about. Where can you trust that deeper intuition? Again, going into some of that Scorpio energy so you can take that next step. We have to have both parts, all right? And that's some of that opposition you're feeling, that Taurus energy. Can I rely on the earth to support me if I take that next step? And Scorpio is asking you to go deeper into understanding the ability to take that next step. All right. And again, once we do, right, when we shed the skin, we do open up. It's almost like we start again. So it is a nice little cycle, a nice little circle of energy that has come forward for us this week. So as you go through the week, look for the signs around you that can help you to shed a layer. All right. That's what the harvest is about, right? Let go of something so that you can Open up to those higher vibrations of energy that we talked about with that full moon energy. Where can you let go? Where can you burn away? Where can you do a ritual? Where can you release the binds that have you to release the energy so that you can move through that? Check into your structures. What needs to be shifted a little bit so that you can prepare yourself as that moon reaches that fullness to take that next step. All right, that's what the cards are offering us this week. So look for those signs around you. Look for the birds, right? Look for keys. Look for for skeletons. <laughs> you know, I found like a snake skeleton the other day walking. That's the kind of things that you want to look for. Look for the branches in your life too. Where can you step off to that next level? All right, how does that feel for you guys? Let me know in the comments below. 
Brooke says she gets a hairpin so often. I know I do too. It's like a weird card, but today I had such a different observation of it. I felt like I was in the midst of that in my trainings today. All right, lots of heavy emotions coming in. All right, so I will take any requests. If you have any, let me know. In the meantime, let's see. This week on the Empowered Spirit Show, I actually have another meditation. It's about developing intuition, going right along with the workshop that I'm going to be offering Saturday, November 3rd. So if you like this kind of work, if you want to learn more, come join us. Gift a friend. Do something nice. Gift a friend. When you sign up, you'll get a code. You can gift a friend for free. Come bring it. We're going to have fun, morning of, of, of learning, meditation, intuition, farm bowls, providing us brunch. Going to have a lot of fun. Fearless Ohm is going to be there. Wild Fox Teas with her wonderful teas, serving us teas. We'll also have Susan Barron talking about, Susan Barone talking about sacred spaces. I think Linda Mays is going to be joining us talking about her single woman's empowerment or just being there with information. And Jennifer Dunbar, Mama Rainbow, her endeavor. So we'll be able to network with other like-minded people as well as learn these skills with a few fun stuff in between. So join us for that as well. All right, let's see here. Brooke would like a card. Brooke, do you have a question? All right, let me know if you have a question. Where is the event? The event is at Forma Arts and Wellness downtown. That's across from the Alabama Theater. It's going to be so much fun. Really come and join us, Brooke. Um, I'll give you a call this week and tell you about it, but it would be a great time if you're not working. I'd love to have you. All right, you have a question for me? I'd love it when you come with a question. Let's see if there's a question that comes forward. I'll give you a second. Let's see. I'll check over here on Instagram. Hey there, y'all. I don't know how to wave. Is that what that means? All right, if you'd like a card, post below. All right, Patrick, how about a question for you as well? Card to increase the divine feminine within. All right, Thelma, this one is for you. All right, so this is the Eight of Cups. So the Eight of Cups is reminding you to feel your emotions. That's exactly what this card is about, all right? Feel the emotions, let it come forward. Don't stuff them down, all right? This is a lot about that overflowing of energy some of the energy in those emotions are finished so feeling that divine energy also means taking responsibility so do a ritual to clear out whatever excess amount of emotions eight is abundance right so that's an excess amount of emotions so when we feel them that is going to help you increase the divine feminine we honor that we don't have to judge it honor it thank you for showing up clear it out do a ritual burn something thelma that's going to help you be really empowered Chant the Adi Shakti. Look it up. Kundalini, Adi Shakti. Chant the Adi Shakti. Burn it away so that can release that energy out for you. All right. Let's see. Brooke, did you post about a question? Okay. Jackie, it's always hard to ask about somebody else. She seems a little down in trouble, but let's see what comes up. All right. With your daughter in mind. Here we go. So the card that comes up is the Six of Pentacles, which is actually a growth card. All right, so sometimes before we grow, we may have that energy of not having that certainty of where we are. But this is really a nice card. It's a bit it's a bit of growth. Pentacles is always about really doing our work, and it shows the growth. It's about community as well. So make sure she gets out, okay? Let's see. How to move the most grace. All right, Brooke, this one is for you. Patrick, if you would come back around with a question, that would be super great. All right, Brooke, how to move the most grace in my relationships. All right, so the card is the Mother of Wands. All right, so that is really that passion and desire. It was reversed, all right? Not always do I read reverse cards in theirs, but it's really like, I feel like it's like really, I think compassion is the best word from here for this card. It's like don't smother. Because see, this card looks like she's smothering her babies, but it was reversed. So I really think to have that energy of, Really having that grace is to give a little space. Open up. You can still embrace, but open up a little bit. Stay with the passion. All right, full moon. So that's fine. Don't just smother, though. That's too attached. Remember the Taurus energy. Don't get too attached and let that go. All right, let's see. Hopefully that will help. Brooke, let me know. All right, Alexandra. Hi, Terry. I'd like a card, please. What specifically does the Hierophant suggest I shift? Oh, okay. Let's draw a card on top of that. Let's see. All right, so we got the sword, so that's the mind, thinking of the mind. We've got the five, uh, seven. So seven here is like there's something underneath the layer there. There's almost like a sly energy going on that you're sitting on. So it's like if you ask that question, like get that, get that fox up. 
Look a little deeper, and that's what it wants you to shift. Don't stay on the surface of your structures. Go a little bit deeper and build them deeper because there is something underneath there that you're not seeing right now. It is a lot in the mental, so it's always our mental, but that's where I would say look at it. All right, does that help? All right, suggest that you shift a little bit of the way that you're thinking about things, and there's something a little deeper. Go a little deeper. All right, let's see. Card, please, being altruistic. I'm not sure what you mean by that, Daniel, but let's see, Patrick. The lovers, what a beautiful card. All right, so this is a beautiful card about how mates come together. The lovers card, this particular deck really is about the personal relationships between people. All right, and when we made, and especially with the, the, the um, swans here, they made for life. So where is that devotion that has been consistent for you in your life? All right, you may need to ask another question or two about that, but that's what's coming up is that lover's card and looking at that divine devotion, all right, that you have going on. Where is that showing up for you? All right, let's see. Yes, that was perfect. Thank you. All right, great. Yes, thank you. Good. I'm glad that was helpful. Thank you, Jackie. All right, anybody else? All right, I don't see anybody over here. Hello, cat monster. All right, how are y'all? All right, anybody else? Let's see. So while I wait another second or two, let's just say again, be ready, be prepared for that beautiful moon. It's a beautiful moon coming up. You'll feel a little bit of that opposition. Taurus is the earth. Scorpio takes us deeper. They're both about some of that personal work that we need to do. Sometimes some of the fear of money and finances, relationships that may overpower. So finding the ability to ground, let go, but go deeper. It is asking that we go deeper. Transform, shed a skin. Do some more healing where you need to. Look at your structures. And then you'll be prepared to take that next step forward. It's a really great time for that transformation. All right. Some of the crystals I've been using right now. Malachite's a great crystal for right now. Rutilated quartz is a great crystal right now. Of course, selenite. And one that I've been really working with is the phantom quartz. All right. That's where you see that little phantom. Great inner child healing going on right now. Perfect time for that as well. All right, let's see. Also, too, if you're in the Homewood area locally at Lucky Cat, roll out your mats. Lucky Cat rolled ice cream. Going to do a pop-up restorative. Take care of moms. That's really what we're going to be talking about. That's on Monday nights at 630. This Wednesday at Birmingham Yoga, I'm going to be doing a full moon Reiki circle. So come in. Full moons are beautiful, as we talked about. And we'll be adding the energy of Reiki 530 at Birmingham Yoga, followed by restorative yoga. And then again, November 3rd is the event, Developing Intuition as a decision-making tool. Again, my passion, my work I'm putting out there as well. All right, let's see. I see a lot of thank yous. Earlier mentioned Uranus and expansion. When does Uranus aspect come into play? It comes in later this week. Let me see if I have a date here. During the full moon is what my notes say. All right, during a full moon, we have another powerful opposition. Venus, also in Scorpio, and Uranus, who is in Taurus. So all of that energy is coming in. The full moon is Wednesday. So look to that energy coming forward. All right, I hope that was helpful. All right, guys, don't forget to do your work. Do your practice. Come into your center. Ground your energy. Look to the signs this week that are around you. Take time. Know what your senses are telling you. Trust the gut feeling, all right? Thanks again for joining me. Look for the Empowered Spirit Show, another meditation, developing intuition, dropping on Wednesday. Have a great day, evening, week. Open up to this beautiful moon. It's getting brighter and brighter and bigger and bigger. To your spirit, namaste.